Hello everyone, welcome to the channel, or welcome back to the channel. Uh, my name is Morgan Little, I play the cello, uh, but today I'm playing the Baroque cello. Today we're going to be talking about what is the Baroque bow, and how do you hold it? So everyone's probably familiar with something that looks a little bit like this. This is a modern cello bow. You'll notice it's got a tip plate, you know, it's got a little bit of plastic over here. Over here down on the frog, you know, we have this ebony frog, we've got some more metal over here, we've got some more metal, this thing that kind of presses it down. We got like a good amount of hair on there, and then sometimes if you're fancy, you got these little buttons and these things and all these little doodads. Um, these bows are pretty much what you'd expect to see if you went to the orchestra, if you looked at anyone playing, they're gonna have something that looks slightly like this. So now, how is this bow different than the Baroque bow? Well, let's just take a look at it one more time and get this image in our head and also just look at this curve. It goes down, it goes down into the hair of the bow. We're going to talk about that in a second. So this is a Baroque bow. You'll notice the curve goes kind of the different way. It goes up instead of down. The tip is a little smaller and if we zoom into the frog over here, you'll notice there's no extra bits. It's all wood. And there's no metal thingy that's spreading the hair out over here. My model has a twisty over here in the back, similar to the modern bow, which also has a little twisty. You know, this controls the tension of the hair. But mine here does have this, you know, because I can't be bothered with the clip and stuff, but some of them you literally you wedge this thing in and it tightens the hair. You stick little pieces of leather in there. Baroque bows are a little bit lighter. And you also hold them in a different place, which we're going to get to in a second. You can get a Baroque bow on eBay. You could get them, I think, on Amazon probably now. Or you could spend a lot of money and get one from a reputable maker, which is what I kind of recommend. You know, you don't want to waste your money. Uh, eBay bows, they're, they're good and they're bad. You're gambling. You know, you spend a couple hundred bucks, you might get the best thing in the world. You might get a piece of plywood. Um, I think it's important to talk to these makers, figure out kind of what your taste is, and then, you know, they'll usually send you like three, four, five bows at a whack. You can try out a whole bunch of them. That's definitely a plus. The minus is they're very expensive. We're looking at somewhere around $2,000, maybe $1,500 if you're getting a deal, but $1,500 to $2,500. It's a lot of money versus maybe like an eBay bow, which is $300, $400. However, the downside is, you only get one and you're going to buy that one bow and you better hope that that one bow is good. So this is my Baroque bow. This is a Ken Millard uh, bow. Uh, there's a very prominent bow maker named Louis Béjean who's been creating sort of, uh, he's used this as a model for a lot of his bows. Um, I own one. They're fantastic. Uh, they sort of all look like this. So if you see a Baroque cellist and they kind of have a bow that, that looks like this and also the, um, the wrapping goes up to about here. You see there's this, it, you can't really see it because it's really bad quality here, but uh, there's this notching that goes kind of up to here, which actually is, is helpful. And we're going to get to that in a second, why that's helpful. But um, you'll see these bows around a lot uh, because they're really good and they're really good for the value. This bow, however, I got very lucky. It just sort of, it was, I was trying out some bows and this one showed up and I, I sort of had the Ollivanders moment. I picked it up and was like, you know, the the wind was blowing and my hair was, you know, my scar illuminated, so <laughs> sort of. But no, no, I loved it, and it really resonated with my cello and my sound, so I kind of felt like I, I like had to buy it. So now let's get to actually using the bow. You've got your Baroque bow, and you're ready to go, and you say, well, how the heck do I hold this? So with our modern bow, with our modern bow, you're going to hold it down at the frog, right? You're going to have your hand back here. You don't necessarily want to touch the hair. Just don't look at my hair because I touch it all the time. But you want to, you know, you're sitting in the back. The fulcrum is here. This is where the weight transfer is. You know, it's, it's all that good stuff that you've probably learned from your private teachers. Yeah. Great. So the Baroque bow is held slightly differently. There's a method to the madness here. The first thing you want to know is you're going to be holding it somewhere in this zone of the bow. Now, there's actually a really easy way of figuring out where the right spot is. So we're going to find the balance point, right? You know, we're going to find it where it where it just sort of balances. It doesn't have to be exact, but you know, there is actually a point in here where it will balance. All right, there we go. That's it's somewhere around there, right? Look at that. It just sort of balances by itself. Uh, make sure not to, you know, completely take your hand off. 
and then we're gonna we're gonna go about halfway back. So we're gonna take this and we're gonna go halfway back. And now that we found this spot that is halfway back, we're actually gonna just put our middle finger right on that spot. So let's just talk about that again. We're gonna find the balance point, right? We're gonna go halfway back between the frog and the area that we just found. And then we're gonna put our middle finger right on that spot, right on the hair. You'll notice it just sticks right on the hair. Okay, that's important. That's important. All right, so now with holding it with our left hand so that we can, you know, hold it up a little bit, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our index finger and we're gonna take this knuckle of it just, just like this first knuckle, just like with your modern bow. And that's just gonna go boop right on there. Okay, great. And then your third finger, you notice it just sort of hangs out back here, similar to, uh, to your modern bow. I like to think it, it doesn't really do much. It just sort of is there, but you just have to make sure don't do this. Don't do this. Just have it be there. Okay. Now your pinky, your pinky is going to be the tip of it violin style on the stick of the bow, right? So you're going to be holding this a little bit. Uh, you know, I'm saying violin style because you know, they all put their pinkies up. But just so to do it again, we have our middle finger on the hair. We have that first knuckle activated into the bow. Third finger is just hanging out, pinky on top of the bow. And then you're just going to put your thumb around here just like you normally would with your normal bow, right? Nothing is different. Nothing is different. All right, great. So you'll notice we have a little bit more flexibility with our fingers. You're going to want to be feeling that, right? And because we have our pinky up, we're going to just naturally be more pronated. And that's what we want. We want more pronation. For the uninitiated, pronation is this. You're turning your wrist and your hand, your forearm like this. This is pronation. So in the bow though, what that means is we're gonna be slightly more like this, you know, like that. Great. So now that you've got a hold of your bow and you're feeling good, you know, you've you've you're feeling the, the pinky controlling the tip, here's a good exercise to do. We're gonna just move our hand up and down. And we're going to feel how the pinky can control how big of a bounce we want that tip to be. Look at that. Oh, man. So you don't want this. You don't want to freeze it. And look at this. This is frozen. And here it is sort of working as a team, right? And you're going to feel that pinky. And it is going to be working. Your pinky is going to be doing something, right? Think about the tip going up and down and up and down, okay? And once you've sort of got a hang of that, we're just going to go right on the cello. Right, we're just gonna stick on a D string. And what we're gonna do is a strong week, which is gonna be a good one. And you'll notice what we're gonna do here. We're gonna take our fingers, right? We're gonna take those little fingies. We're gonna go strong, weak, okay? And we've done our strong week. Now let's go over here. What I'm gonna do is you'll notice, I'm gonna prone it in. I'm gonna use this second finger. I'm gonna go pull, push. Right? And don't don't be afraid of it cracking right now. That's totally fine. So we go pull, push, pull, push, pull, push. Look at my wrist. Look at my elbow. You'll notice I've got some action. I got some action in my wrist, but none of this. None of this. None of the, no, it's not like alright? It's actually fairly neutral. So again, neutral wrist. And we're gonna go. You, know, you don't have to get crazy about this too, by the way. You don't have to get crazy about the strong and weak. What we're looking for is putting in pressure into our hand and then releasing it and then putting it in and then releasing it. So now I would advise just throw off a couple scales like that. Just start to get used to how your Baroque bow feels in your hand and really actually check in and make sure that your pinky is on top of the stick. I'm just going to say that one more time. The pinky needs to be on top of the stick. It's very important. So just keep that in your mind. I hope this video was helpful. I'm going to try to break down some of the concepts of Baroque cello for everybody here uh, in the next couple of videos. Um, let me know if you have any questions in the comments. I'm, I, you know, I've thought a little bit too much about this actually, I think. So uh, if anything in here was confusing, I would love to, to help you out with that, make it a little clearer for you. If you, uh, if you enjoyed this video and uh, you feel like you, you want to see a little bit more content like this, then hey, I'd really appreciate uh, a like. And if you want to keep seeing this over time, then, you know, think about subscribing. Uh, I try and do these fairly regularly now that, you know, I've got some time and, and it's kind of fun. So I hope that you guys are enjoying and um, 
I hope that you enjoy your brand new cello bow hold. Thanks for watching.